In my last video, I reviewed all the ballistic guns in Starfield and rated them based on the quality of their designs. And, uh, well, uh, most of them are pretty dang cursed. But now it's time to cover all the energy and heavy weapons to see how well they hold up. I do have to give them the benefit of the doubt since they're all futuristic sci-fi designs, but even then, they get some fundamental concepts completely wrong which shatters all hopes of immersion. And as always, there's plenty to critique purely from a gameplay or artistic point of view, because a lot of these guns are just straight up ugly and don't feel satisfying to use. First up on the chopping block is the Fallout 3 laser, I mean, uh, the Equinox laser rifle. I can't be the only one who sees the resemblance. If anything though, it's more similar to the Institute laser rifle, which I hate with a burning passion. But you know what? I genuinely like the design of the Equinox. It looks much more realistic and sleek than all the other goofy sci-fi guns made by Bethesda. Sometimes a boxy design can look really good. And other times, uh, not so much. It just depends how it's executed. And in this case, the squared off and simple aesthetic just works. I also appreciate that they gave it an integrated reflex sight instead of having basic irons. It was shown to be using really basic irons in the gameplay trailer, but thankfully the devs changed it before release. The battery being loaded in from under the barrel like a PP-19 is pretty neat too, but it doesn't look like you operate any sort of mag release or a battery release. Your character just rips it out with brute strength. That's a common theme you'll see with a lot of these weapon animations though. Another thing I can knock it for is the overly blocky pistol grip. Like yeah, the gun as a whole can be blocky, but the grip should at least be comfortable to use. Overall though, this gun looks pretty good, on the uh, surface that is. When it comes to the functionality, now that is where things start to get weird. But first, if you're watching this video, then chances are you're a big nerd that likes sci-fi space games. And you know what? I bet you like anime too. Now imagine, what if we combined the two? That would be pretty epic. Well, our prayers have been answered by today's sponsor, Honkai Star Rail. You ever heard of this little uh, indie game called Genshin Impact? Well, the mad lads did it again, but in space. You see, Honkai Star Rail is like a semi-open world sci-fi RPG game. There's a lot of layers to it, okay? And honestly, I was surprised by how much better this game is compared to the average gacha title. Like, they got a whole story with dialogue and cutscenes and uh, pretty good voice acting going on here. And my goodness, the presentation and art style is absurdly good. This game has no right being this baller. The fights are pretty neat too, however I did get whipped a few times on the first boss. Turns out I had to turn on my brain cells and use a smart strategy to beat him. Other than that, the various characters are pretty dope, and they all got mad drip. They just added in two limited time characters called uh, Huo Huo and Argenti. So on one hand, you got the cute anime girl who uses cuteness to support her allies, while on the other, you got Mr. Pretty Boy Prince Charming who slays his enemies by using a big spear. What a combo. The game's looking better than ever with the 1.5 update, so you guys ought to check it out. It's completely free to play, and it's available on PC, PlayStation, and mobile devices too. You can use my link in the description to download Honkai Star Rail, which will also grant you a sweet bonus to go along with it. Now let's get back to talking about laser guns. This supposed laser gun has quite uh, a hefty amount of recoil, which doesn't make sense because lasers don't produce any noticeable amount of recoil. It also has a moving bolt of some kind, but uh, I don't think that's necessary for a laser gun. It's not like you have to worry about cycling rounds into a chamber. I mean, it's just shooting beams of light after all. Or is it? Well, uh, turns out that the laser guns in this game don't function like real laser guns. They're completely mislabeled. And yes, laser guns are a real thing. They focus energy into a beam of light, which travels at the speed of light of course, and the way they deal damage is through heat, not kinetic energy. Functionally, they're just like a regular old laser pointer, but with uh, one million times more power. Right now, they're only viable as stationary weapons for disabling vehicles and missiles, and they're pretty effective in doing so. I can't say that they're powerful enough to blast fiery holes through people, but uh, I sure wouldn't want to stand in front of this thing. Either way, 300 years into the future, it's definitely possible that we'll see some powerful handheld designs. I know a lot of people probably think of something like a Star Wars blaster when they hear laser gun, but those aren't laser guns. They're called blasters for a reason, because they're not lasers they're blasters, and they'd be blasting. It's more accurate to say that there's some type of plasma weapon. In Starfield, these so-called laser guns have a perceivable travel time and are shot in short burst instead of a constant beam. They have recoil too, so that suggests that they're not laser guns, rather they're some kind of plasma weapon. 
You know, kind of like the blasters from Star Wars. It's still really confusing though, because they have features of a laser gun, but they function as plasma weapons. The developers definitely got plasma and lasers mixed up here, so as a result, all the laser guns in this game are complete sci-fi nonsense. I suppose it doesn't matter though, because uh, they're all running on pure space magic anyway. Now let's get back to the Equinox. Uh, really, it's not too bad if you ignore the one big caveat that it's not actually a laser gun. But another funny thing I noticed is that it has a warning label which says, do not store in temperatures above 200 degrees Celsius. Do not store in non-pressurized environments. It even suggests that the batteries may rupture if you do so. So are you telling me that this space age laser gun isn't resistant to the harsh environments of space? Like is this thing gonna blow up in my face if I try to take it to the surface of Venus? Will it implode if I try to do a spacewalk out in the void? Hopefully not. I'm pretty sure it just means that it can't handle those environments for prolonged periods of time. So I assume you can still use it in space for at least a few hours before it blows up. And to be fair, I don't think any kind of gun could survive out in space for prolonged periods of time. So the Equinox is a pretty neat looking design, but the main thing holding it back is that its functionality is all wonky and it wouldn't work the way that it's depicted in game. If anything, it would probably just blow up in your face. Mm, best I can do is C tier then. <laughs> It definitely has potential for a higher rating though, they just need to make up their minds on which type of energy weapon it should be. By Bethesda's standards, we're off to a pretty decent start, but don't worry, it gets much worse from here on out. The Orion is another so-called laser gun, but oh boy, this one has no style whatsoever. Just look at it, it looks like a mutated alien, almost as if a terramorph morphed into a gun. Now I'm just waiting on a tiny little alien with sharp teeth to pop out. At least the pistol grip looks good, but the rest of the gun is an amalgamated mass of space junk. Oddly enough, it looks like the core of this gun is based on a typical shotgun receiver. Then they just uh, added on a bunch of random plastic clumps on top of it. The stock and carry handle especially look completely out of place, as if they were thrown together like mismatching Lego pieces. The stock is just a random block of plastic, which would be really awkward and uncomfortable to shoulder, and the oversized carry handle is totally unnecessary. It's so far back that you wouldn't be able to see down the sides anyway. It could be deleted entirely and nothing of value would be lost. But really, the silliest thing about this gun is that it has two widely separated barrels which fire simultaneously. It seems like a good idea because that means you would be doing double the damage, right? Well, uh, in practice, this makes the gun pretty terrible because of how laughably inaccurate it is. Even when aiming down sights, the lasers, or uh, the plasma bolts I guess you'd call them, tend to drift off in random directions and miss your target. I don't know about y'all, but a laser gun being this inaccurate is just ridiculous. Imagine turning on a flash flashlight and the beam doesn't go straight. Yeah, that makes no sense. But of course, it's functioning more like a plasma gun, so in that sense, I can see why there would be some level of spread. But still, futuristic guns should at the very least shoot straight. The sights are also extremely basic for such a futuristic gun, which is uh, probably why it's so inaccurate. I mean, the Equinox has an integrated reflex sight, so why not this one too? So all around, the Orion is pretty awful. It's probably the ugliest energy weapon I have ever seen, and it's pretty miserable to use too. I say this one belongs in the dreaded Fallout 4 assault rifle tier. It's pretty funny how Bethesda managed to make a genuinely good looking laser gun along with one of the ugliest of all time. They really do amaze me with their inconsistency. So next up we've got another simple laser gun called the Solstice. And hey look, it comes with an integrated reflex sight. Now that's what I'm talking about baby. Although one thing I should mention about these reflex sights in game is that they don't function like uh, real reflex sights at all. Reflex sights function by projecting an image onto a lens. But in Starfield, the reticle looks like it's painted directly onto the lens with a green sharpie. For the Solstice itself though, it's not too bad looking really. It's a fairly simple gun, and it gives off the impression that it's more of an oh shit backup gun, rather than something you'd use as a primary. You know, kind of like your emergency bathroom gun. What? Are you guys telling me you don't have an emergency bathroom gun? Anyway, the way the Solstice is loaded is pretty interesting because you completely replace the battery along with the whole barrel too. It seems like a decent enough idea because that means you don't have to worry about the gun overheating if you just replace half the damn thing during a reload. It might be a little awkward to carry around all these spare barrels though, but of course this is a video game so your character has pockets which are portals to the fourth dimension. Really, the only thing I don't like about this gun is that it looks a little cartoonish and the rails on the side seem like they don't do anything. It also doesn't function like a real laser gun, despite being called one. It's not terrible at least, so I'll put the Solstice in D tier. 
So after all that sci-fi nonsense, we finally have a real laser weapon called the Cutter. It shoots out three constant beams that travel at the speed of light. They shoot perfectly straight too, and they don't go off in random directions. You can even focus the beams to make them stronger, which changes the color from red to orange, indicating that the frequency and energy of the beam has increased. The Cutter doesn't make a whole bunch of bombastic loud pew pew noises either. It starts off with a little burst, but then it chills out and ends up humming like an old office light. You can hear the rumble of the motor too, which is a pretty neat detail. There is a slight amount of recoil when firing the weapon, but it seems like it's caused more by the internals moving around rather than the laser itself causing any kickback. Overall, the recoil is very low and very smooth, which is much more representative of how a laser gun would actually work. I also think it's pretty cool how it doesn't need to be reloaded. Rather, it has an internal power source, so it just needs a minute to charge back up and cool down which is exactly how real laser guns operate. It's not very effective to use it as a weapon though, because it's not really supposed to be one. It's designed to be used as a mining tool, so it has a really low base damage. It's not like lasers are super OP and can burn holes through anything in one short burst anyway. It does take a while for the target to heat up, so uh, that is pretty realistic. However, the range on this thing is absolutely miserable. It's even worse than the average video game shotgun, which is pretty stupid because lasers are beams of light that can reach out for miles. They do become less effective the further out they go, but uh, they sure don't have a sudden drop-off point after 10 feet. I suppose we can chalk that up to it being a mining tool, so perhaps uh, somehow its range was artificially limited to keep their workers from sniping their bosses with a deadly laser beam. For the most part, the cutter is a fairly realistic depiction of a laser gun, besides the pitiful range drop-off. Aesthetically though, it's uh, pretty lame. Again, it's designed as an industrial tool, so it doesn't have to be pretty or tactical. I'm just disappointed that there's no real laser weapons in this game that function like the cutter. So you know what? Fuck you. I'm putting the cutter in double S tier, solely because I think it's funny to put this shit-ass mining tool above everything else. And, uh, yep, that wraps up all the laser guns. Seriously, that's it. There's a whopping four fucking laser guns in a sci-fi space game, and the best part is that three of them don't even function like laser guns. Meanwhile, there is 26 ballistic firearms. But don't worry, because there's plenty more space magic guns to cover. Next up are a group of weapons which are called particle accelerators. Yeah, these mad lads took a whole ass particle accelerator and shrunk it down into a tiny handheld package. I have no clue how this would work, so for all these science nerds out there, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let's start with the Big Bang. And I'm not talking about the Big Bang Theory, that's a myth made up by lizard people. I'm talking about the Big Bang Particle Shotgun. Unfortunately, this one looks like another disastrous AI-generated pile of plastic trash. Remember what I said about blocky designs sometimes working and uh, sometimes not? Well, this one is about as visually appealing as a Kia Soul. Or really, it looks an awful lot like an old NASA computer. Just look at all these buttons and switches and random doohickeys. They litter the entire surface of the gun. I counted, and there's 26 in total. Plus a freaking outlet too, in case you want to charge your iPhone 6 billion. I can just imagine some goober in the middle of combat saying, Hold on guys, I need to configure my Big Bane particle accelerator shotgun before heading into battle. Then they proceed to commence a whole sequence more complicated than launching a rocket into outer space. Now what's really funny is that you replace the battery as if you're ejecting and inserting an old cassette tape. So I think it's pretty obvious that the developers were intentionally trying to make this thing look like an old computer. Or maybe they didn't design it themselves at all, and they just typed in the words energy shotgun along with uh, NASA punk and cassette futurism into an AI image generator, and then they got this in return. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, because this gun takes those themes a little bit too literally. So as a result, we've got a comically boxy design, so much so that the pistol grip and stock are completely squared off. It's about as ergonomic as a 2x4 from Home Depot. And speaking of Home Depot, this gun is so ugly that it makes me want to go to Home Depot to buy materials for a pipe bomb. Hey guys, Brandy Boy from the future here. My lawyer has advised me to cut this joke out of the video. It doesn't have a trigger guard either, so you may get some accidental discharges. It's also kind of silly that it has the most basic iron sights in existence. There is no rear sight at all, and the front sight is a really teeny tiny triangle, so in reality, it would be pretty dang hard to hit anything at range. 
To be fair, it is a shotgun, so it doesn't need to be pinpoint accurate. But still, having a half-decent sighting system should be the bare minimum for these futuristic guns. Like they have the technology to make a handheld particle accelerator, but they forgot to invest any points into advanced targeting systems. Now what I am surprised by is its maximum range. This energy shotgun can reach out pretty dang far, so you can snipe with it, assuming that your eagle eyes are strong enough to see your minuscule front sight. Besides that, it is nice to see that this particular shotgun doesn't adhere to the typical video game trope of shotguns suddenly doing no damage after like 5 feet. It is a very powerful gun to use in-game. I suppose thrusting particles straight through people would be quite devastating. But the design is so ugly that I can never bring myself to use it. Yeah, the Big Bang is about as repulsive as the show of the same name. No doubt about it, it belongs in the Fallout 4 Assault Rifle tier. Bazinga. Now let's take a look at the Inflictor. And oh my goodness, the only thing this gun is inflicting is my eyes. Not really, I just thought that was a funny joke. In all seriousness, it's a fairly simple design and it's not too over the top, but it still looks like an alien space gun. It almost looks like it was ripped straight out of Destiny though, so something about it just feels off. Almost uncanny. Either way, it's definitely a magic space gun because it literally spits out rainbow sprinkles and pixie dust during the reload. And yet, despite it running on pure space magic, it still has super basic iron sights straight from the 20th century. Like, come on, people. This is the future. All your guns should be using reflex sights at the very least. Preferably, they should be using some kind of advanced scope which can see targets through walls or something. And oh god, that just made me realize there are no infrared or thermal scopes or or any type of advanced optics in this game. All these guns are still using basic red dots and optical lenses, so their optics technology has not advanced one bit in over 300 years. Now that's definitely a lot of missed potential. Also, you might want to create some guns which aren't designed to impale the user. This little part that juts out on the bottom looks like it may stab you in the liver while shooting, but maybe that's actually a smart design choice because it forces the user to control the recoil out of pure fear of being stabbed to death. The muzzle is especially weird though because if instead of it being one hole, it's three slits which are all misaligned from each other, and the middle slit is especially long. I have no clue why that's the case, uh, you guys tell me your theories. Other than that, I don't have much else to say. I just don't really care for this gun, and I never used it because nothing about it is appealing. I'll put the inflictor in D tier. The Star Shard follows the same theme as the Inflictor, but in pistol form. The main thing that sticks out to me is that it has a moving slide, but I'm not sure if that's necessary since it's being fed by a battery or a particle fuse as it's called in game. This particular slide is kind of weird because it's split in two and the middle part doesn't move when you rack it. But hey, that is a feature seen on the real life LIGO alien pistol, so I think it's a neat detail. But still, it would probably make a lot more sense to have a slide on a ballistic pistol instead. Other than that, this thing just looks way too bulky and wide for a pistol. But perhaps all that bulkiness is required for the whole uh, particle accelerator thing to work. It even looks like it has a radiator under the slide for cooling, but one thing I realized about these air-cooled designs is that they wouldn't work in space. Because, you know, there's no air in space. So perhaps it's using the rainbow sprinkles to cool it down instead. I suppose the overall design isn't too bad, but again, I just don't like the aesthetic of the Varun weapons. I'll put the star shark in D tier. Another particle weapon is the Novalite, but this one sports a very different aesthetic. As you can see, it's directly inspired by Minecraft gun mods. But in all seriousness, I say that the blocky shape does work with this one. As I said before, there can be plenty of beauty and simplicity. And I really appreciate when developers make fantasy weapons that are more on the simplistic side rather than going overboard. Still though, the grip shouldn't be that simplistic. Even for real life guns that are rather blocky, the grip is still curved to fit the shape of the human hand. You know, to make it more comfortable. A futuristic gun lacking such basic ergonomics is kind of silly. Just like the Star Shard, this one has a moving slide that you rack during the reload. And again, I'm not entirely sure if this is necessary for an energy-based weapon. But overall, I do like the Nova Light's design. It's simple and straight to the point, so there's not much bullshit I can point out. I'll put it in C tier next to the Equinox. Next up is another Nova weapon called the Disruptor. 
It has the same theme as the Novalite, but this one is a full-sized rifle. It doesn't deal any lethal damage though, it's actually a taser. If anything, I was expecting the pistol variant to be the taser, while the rifle would be the lethal version. You know, it's probably a lot more convenient for the space police to carry around a small taser pistol in their holster, rather than lug around another rifle alongside their primary. But uh, whatever, the weapon itself works fine. But not really, because this taser sucks balls. It's not very effective at incapacitating targets in one hit. Sometimes it'll take a full magazine to knock them out. It is extremely annoying having to use this weapon for the missions that require it, or for the ones that expect you to use it. Like, there's some stealth missions where you're expected to use this thing to knock out enemies without killing them, but since it takes so many shots to neutralize, they end up alerting the other guards before they pass out. But you know what? That's actually pretty dang realistic, because tasers in real life aren't always a one-shot. In fact, they can be really shit at their job. I'll get you, bitch! So, funnily enough, the shittiness of this weapon makes it very realistic and highly immersive. The Nova Blast Disruptor is easily S-tier, no questions asked. Now we can move on to the family of mag weapons, which use the power of magnetism to launch projectiles at high speeds. There's uh, two flavors of electromagnetic weapons, coil guns and rail guns. Coil guns have coils, and rail guns have rails. Duh. <laughs> the mag weapons in Starfield are referred to as rail guns, so let's focus on those. So the rails on a railgun are electrically charged and create opposing magnetic fields. That opposing force is what's used to shoot the projectile. Then you got the piece in the middle, called the armature, which is what flings the projectile out the barrel. This stuff is so powerful that railguns can shoot bullets at over 5,000 miles per hour. Uh, that's pretty fast. The railguns in Starfield, though, are all handheld, and uh, they aren't nearly as powerful. Their power seems to be on par with their conventional firearm counterparts, which seems kind of lame and diminishes the advantage of having a railgun. But uh, anyway, let's take a look at the mag sniper specifically. Upon first glance, it doesn't look too bad. What really sticks out to me though, is that the rails are far apart, and there is no armature, so the projectile simply floats down the, uh... Well, uh, you can't call this a barrel anymore, but you know what I mean. So this railgun completely defies the fundamental design of a railgun that we know today. Perhaps the people in the future figured out a better way of doing it, and uh, I suppose this could be possible. I'm curious to see how well this design ages after 300 years. Probably not too well considering that these are the kind of developers to put the circle in the square hole. And look, this railgun does have a round bullet with a square hole. What a coincidence. But to be fair, real railguns do have square barrels because they use sabo rounds with a square casing. It seems like the Max Sniper uses something like this too, but the projectile is noticeably rounded off instead of being a pointy dart. That's probably not optimal for extreme speeds, but I suppose it still works. One thing I can say is that I don't think it's a smart idea to have all these important parts completely exposed to the elements. All the mag weapons give off the impression that they're crude prototypes, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense seeing as this is the 24th century. Like this gun looks like a prototype you would see in the modern day, not something 300 years into the future. They almost look like industrial tools too, and in the case of the Mag Sniper, this aesthetic does kind of work, but at the same time, I do think it would be more characteristic if it was a fully developed system with sleek ergonomics. At the very least, the Mag Sniper does seem like a somewhat believable prototype, so I'll put it in C tier. Next up is a revolver railgun called the Mag Shot. What's pretty special about this revolver, besides it having the powers of Magneto, is that it shoots three bullets at once, and they're completely cubicle. Like, they're literally Minecraft blocks, which is absolutely hilarious. Obviously, cubes aren't very aerodynamic, so these square bullets would severely hinder your range and accuracy. To be fair, there is historical precedence of this with the magnificent Puckle Gun. It normally used regular bullet-shaped bullets, but it also had optional square bullets, which were thought to inflict more pain and suffering. And I kid you not, these square bullets were specifically used to kill Turks because they were not deserving of a humane death. Hey, their words, not mine. So that explains why this gun is so blatantly overpowered, 
because square bullets do more damage, obviously. If you get the legendary variant called the Kill Hauler, then even the strongest bosses become an absolute joke. Not only does this thing have an absurdly high base damage, but it's also fully automatic, and the fire rate is so fast that it's hard to shoot a single shot at a time. You can dump the whole cylinder in 17 milliseconds. I counted. So yeah, you've got a fully automatic rail revolver that shoots three square bullets all at once, which has a fire rate of over 3,000 rounds per minute. What an absolutely absurd concept. Honestly, I can kind of get down with that. Sometimes the wackiness is appreciated, but this gun is just plain broken. And I mean that in multiple ways, because there's no chance this design would work. There are no rails on this uh, supposed railgun, nor is there a power source, so it's complete sci-fi nonsense that runs on pure space magic. It also looks like this frame is about to fall apart from the slightest gust of wind. The grip looks really uncomfortable too, and it's completely lacking any iron sights. Instead, they're hollow frames, and in their stead, you aim with three lasers that protrude from the barrel, but they seemingly originate from nothing. Seriously, they aren't coming out of a laser pointer, just thin air. Even worse, the bullets don't disappear from the cylinder after you shoot them, which completely destroys my immersion. Wow, this gun is an absolute disaster. I can't say I hate it as much as the Fallout 4 assault rifle though, so I'll save a special spot for it in the F tier. Now for the last bunch of mag weapons, we have the Mag Shear, the Mag Pulse, and the Mag Storm. They all share the same core design, so it's best to cover all three of them all at once. And oh boy, there's a lot to cover. So firstly, they all take direct inspiration from the Metal Storm Volley weapon. The Metal Storm is an absolutely absurd weapon, which is like no other. It sports dozens of barrels while also using superposed loads, meaning each barrel holds multiple rounds. There is no chamber or striker either. The rounds are electrically fired. The combination of those three factors makes this gun hypothetically capable of shooting over 1 million rounds per minute. It's a pretty crazy weapon, so of course the folks at Bethesda saw it and thought, now let's make it into a portable railgun. My goodness, the sheer power of these weapons would be unfathomable. These weapons have got to be a war crime of some kind, but at this point in time, the Geneva Convention is probably long forgotten. And besides, it's not a war crime if you win. I will admit, these guns are a pretty cool and wacky idea. However, the execution kind of sucks because they're nowhere near as badass as their real-life inspiration. The Magstorm is by far the fastest one, but it only has a measly 2400 rounds per minute. In all fairness, I suppose it does make sense to throttle their fire rate since they're handheld infantry weapons. You know, to make them more controllable and to not waste all of your ammunition in a single second. Still though, the Magstorm is about as fast as a minigun and you would expect it to be an overpowered monster of a weapon. But good old Bethesda that made sure to nerf the hell out of its base damage, so each bullet hits about as hard as the punches in my dreams, despite it shooting a 50 caliber projectile. I get that they nerfed the Magstorm to keep it from being unfathomably overpowered, but honestly, balancing is overrated and ruins all the fun. I would much rather have the biblically accurate power of the Metal Storm, so I can rain down righteous judgment upon an entire alien population all in one plank second. Another odd thing about the Magstorm is that it only holds 160 rounds. On the third array, it only shoots the first couple rows, and uh, that means the bottom half of this array isn't loaded all the way, and there's no reason for that. Less bullet is always a bad thing. It has 72 barrels in total, so if it can go through the array three times, then it should have 216 rounds. But really, it should easily hold double that amount, and that goes for all the mag weapons. It looks like they could easily fit in a couple more arrays of ammunition, unless they're using comically long rectangular prisms as ammuni- Oh, what the f- They're using comically long rectangular prisms as ammunition! This shit is so long it looks like a metal cheese stick. Okay, turns out that's only for the mag share. The mag pulse and mag storm have what looks to be a little dart wrapped in a square casing. So hey, that's cool to see at least. It's still really confusing though, because the mag share and the mag storm both use the same 50 caliber ammunition in game. And also, the mag storm ammunition is visibly smaller. So perhaps the mag storm was originally designed to have its own ammunition, but then the developers coded it to use 50 caliber at the last minute. I'm also wondering where the heck the rails are on these supposed railguns. 
Are you telling me that each barrel has little magnetic rails in them? And how exactly would you combine the concept of a railgun and the monstrous metal storm into a single handheld weapon? Honestly, my pea brain simply cannot fathom the concept, so I won't even try. In the end, they're probably just running on space magic, because as we all know, Bethesda likes to completely break the laws of reality with their guns. But really, the worst offense that these guns commit is the crime of being fucking ugly, because holy hell, they have no style. I was joking earlier, but now I'm genuinely starting to believe that Bethesda fired all their concept artists and replaced them with AI. Like there's just too many random details added on these weapons that are haphazardly slapped together. The Magstorm especially looks like a horrific eldritch being, which was fused into a heap of scrap metal as punishment for its interdimensional war crimes. In no way does it resemble a gun or a weapon of any kind. It is beyond cursed. This one somehow manages to be even worse than the Forsaken Fallout 4 assault rifle. Therefore, I shall condemn this monstrosity to an eternity in the abyss tier. The Magpulse and Magshare aren't quite as repulsive though, no pun intended, so they can find refuge in the F tier. I know video games operate on the rule of cool, so the guns don't always have to be practical or realistic, but uh, Bethesda forgot about the cool part of the rule. They operate on the rule of goofy, it seems. And that's it for the electromagnetic weapons. The next two are a couple of industrial tools called the rivet gun and the arc welder. Uh, I don't think it's really fair for me to put them on this list, but you can use them as weapons, so I might as well. The arc welder is a big-ass welding gun that shoots hot arcs of electricity. Wow, very cool. And the rivet gun is a rivet gun, which is laughably inaccurate. Seriously, it's nearly impossible to hit the broadside of a barn with this thing. I don't know why it has to be so inaccurate, even if it is an industrial tool. Imagine trying to shoot a rivet into something, but the accuracy is so low that the rivet goes off in a random direction and nails your co-worker right in the face. Uh, that would be pretty funny. But honestly, I don't care for giving these tools an in-depth review. This ain't no dang hardware channel. They're uh, pretty irrelevant anyway, and I'll bet most players never knew they existed. I'll just put both of these tools in F tier because nobody cares about them. Let's finish things off with a bang with a couple of grenade launchers. This first one is called the Bridger. Imagine somebody took a model 1887 shotgun and then turned it into a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Yeah, that's the Bridger. Honestly, it is a pretty badass concept. Would it be a practical or feasible design? Probably not, but I do have to admit, it looks pretty dang cool. It almost looks like a Jacob's grenade launcher that you would see in Borderlands. However, you can't really call this a grenade launcher because the projectiles keep burning after you shoot them. So technically, it would be classified as a rocket launcher. They are pretty dang slow for rockets though, but I guess that makes sense seeing as they're small when compared to a full-sized rocket. The way you load in these little mini rockets wouldn't work though. You load it like a typical lever action, but for rounds this big, it doesn't really work. You can see that your character's thumb, along with part of the rocket, clips through the gun because this geometry is impossible. The irons are really basic too, but I suppose it works with the old uh, lever action vibe. Other than that, there's not much I dislike about this gun. It's genuinely an awesome looking design. Impractical, but very awesome. Now this is a good example of how to do the rule of cool. Not whatever the hell they did with uh, some of the other abominations in this game. I'll go ahead and put the Bridger in A tier then, because why not? Lever action rocket launcher go boom. And lastly, we have another launcher called the Negotiator. It's specifically used for negotiating with terrorists. And by negotiating, I mean blowing them up. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's just so funny, bro. Yeah. So, obviously, the Negotiator looks like a futuristic version of the M32 grenade launcher, which is basically a big revolver that shoots 40mm explosive rounds. Pretty cool stuff. The Negotiator is a big 40mm revolver too, but during the reload, you simply replace the entire cylinder instead of loading in individual rounds. That does make the reload pretty dang quick, but it sure would be cumbersome to carry around multiple huge cylinders like that. Obviously, it'd be easier to carry around a dozen grenades in a belt or bandolier instead. But again, this is a video game, so your inventory is as infinite as the universe. Also, this one is technically a rocket launcher. It's used using the same rocket propelled ammunition that the Bridger uses. And one thing I noticed about this ammunition is that it doesn't disappear from the cylinder after you shoot it, which is highly unimmersive. 
Literally unplayable. Seriously, I already shot these rounds, so why are they still there? Probably because Bethesda doesn't know how to animate it. This is AAA quality, folks. Besides that, I can't say I'm a big fan of the negotiator's look. There are some cool elements to it, but it just seems bloated. It has that mysterious square above the barrel that we saw with the Weagle, along with the big bricks from the breach shotgun. At least it's not quite as goofy as some of the guns in F tier, and it does look intimidating, so I'll put it in D tier. And that wraps up everything wrong with every single gun in Starfield. So here is the final tier list with every ranged weapon, ballistic, energy, and explosive. For the most part, the guns in Starfield are uh, pretty bad, but there are a few that shine through and are pretty good examples of sci-fi guns done right. This tier list is 100% objective, by the way, and I will not be accepting any criticism. Not really, of course. I always appreciate what you guys have to say, too. As always, I strive to be as immersive as possible. So if there's anything I missed or got wrong, then please do let me know in the comments down below. I tried my best to judge these weapons, but unfortunately, I spent so many hours looking at them that they lowered my IQ by 25 points. If you guys want to keep seeing more epic gun reviews like this, then make sure to blast that like button, and I'll see y'all in the next one.